Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. I want to give a special shout out to the Psalm Sisters. They delivered a wonderful gift through an individual who doesn't like to be named, but she is a, as they say, it's a dekes, a righteous person. I got a whole bunch of wonderful things, and I appreciate it. One of which was glass mugs, which is the greatest gift you can give. (laughs) Because one of the greatest things God has given us is coffee, and the only way you drink coffee is through a glass mug, right? That's just how it is. So to those who know that, l'chaim. But really, thank you so much for the support and for being there. And uh, it means a lot to know that you're there, and, and I thank all of you for your kindness yesterday we thought we were talking about the idea of of believing in others what that does what that means but not just like a nice thing it's it's a responsibility it's a responsibility in life it's it's something that we have to work on one of the great mistakes I think that we make is that we think that you know we wait for it to be natural like as if like the goal in life is to live your life and then like when it works out you believe in others and when you're not in the mood you don't versus it's your responsibility like it's your responsibility never forget maybe seven years ago a guy came to my office and he had just lost his job I'll never forget this and his the school that his kids were going to um, found out and immediately called him and said not to worry. He, they will not be asking for his tuition payments and he's they understand he's going through something really, really difficult. And they got him. And his kids went to school tuition free and the community sort of rallied around him and he was so determined to get a new job and support his family and pay back all these people like i was like taken by his determination like you can it was like palpable like it was unbelievable like he like he would do anything and lo and behold he got another job and like he did better than he did before and he paid everybody back and he gave a big donation to the school it's a it ended well. And what, what what struck me from from that conversation was this man's desire to support his family. It was it was it was a it was like a holy feeling. It wasn't it it wasn't this ambition just to 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 accumulate. There was something there was something responsible there, you know? This was his He took it as his responsibility. And whatever it was, the the opportunity he had beforehand had folded. The company he was a part of folded. And he would have done anything. If I would have said to him, there's floors to sweep, he would have been like, just give me the broom. Like, give me the broom, get out of the way. Responsible. I don't care if it's hard. I don't care if I have to travel. This is how much I need to make. And I got to make this much money as soon as possible. I'm responsible. There's a difference between sitting in the back seat of a car and enjoying the ride and being the driver. The driver is responsible. When you're on a road trip, I did this once in my life. One time in my life, we drove with the family, God bless, down to Florida from New York once God bless my wife she's like I'm driving I'll, I'll, we'll split it yeah I love her I drove the whole way in fairness to my wife I probably didn't even let her drive I was probably like you know I'll, I'm fine I got it I'm fine I'm fine I got it but my kids out cold out cold and I remember driving like it was yesterday it was the heart I drove straight it's a competitive thing not for now I'm like you know what I'm going all the way we left New York stopped in uh, 
um, Silver Spring, Maryland, Rockville, Maryland for dinner. Got on the road, 8, 9 o'clock. Boom, Florida. And the hardest part, by the way, of driving to Florida, for those who ever did it, once, probably, is Florida's a pretty big state. So when you're going, when that, we went for Passover. When you're going for Passover to, like, you know, Hollywood, Florida, that's, like, south. But when you get to Florida, that's north. So when you, like, get to the state and everyone's, like, cheering, yay, Florida, and then you look at your ways and it's, like, five more hours. You're, like, five more hours? Like, I'm in Florida. How big could Florida be? Big. Long. I think that was the hardest part of the drive. But either way, I remember, I remember being in Georgia. Four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Fighting sleep. Fighting sleep. Doing anything possible. Like, anything. Freezing cold air. Listening to music. Um, anything. Just drinking quiet. I remember, like, fighting. Highways, nowhere to pull over. And looking at the back, and they're all out cold. God bless. And thinking to myself, that's the difference. The guy in the wheel, the woman at the wheel, they're responsible. Listen, God runs the world. You hope everybody's healthy and safe always. But the person who takes the wheel says, I'm responsible. So even if I want to close my eyes, I can't close my eyes. The difference between understanding what it means to see somebody else and be responsible to pour into them spiritual strength and not being responsible is manifest when you're not in the mood. When they do something that annoys you. When you're just preoccupied with your life. When you're just unimpressed. Forget the world. Just take the people in our lives. We're responsible. We're responsible for their growth. We're responsible for their Salamelo Kim, their, their image of God, their spiritual health. And when you see yourself as holding the wheel even if you're tired even if you're annoyed even if you're upset even if they don't look like you even if they don't talk like you even if they don't impress you you take responsibility to make sure the people that are in your world leave your presence every time they do a little bit better than when they got there And this is not easy. And I'm, I, I am in no way saying that I've mastered this. I have not. But it's a responsibility. Which starts with your inner core. And extends outward. And it does. It extends outward. And there are friends that you have. You don't know their life. And they look amazing on the outside. And you're taking a responsibility for building them up. And listening to them. And giving them the benefit of the doubt and finding something about them to compliment them and to see the best in them is building them it's building them there are people you work with that may have nobody that ever really built them up and your compliments and your your vision of them and your hearing them and your recognition that just like you would never deprive somebody of food, you would never deprive somebody of spiritual nourishment, the responsibility, the taking the wheel of the relationship, not in a way where you're dominating, but in a way in which you're giving. I was talking about this to about my own, my, one of my rabbis, Rabbi Levy, how when he delivers a message to me, even if I'm upset with it because I don't want to hear it, he doesn't change. He doesn't respond back. With negativity, he stays even keel because he's trying to help me. You know what a hi, how are you check in phone call means to somebody else? It could be major. You're responsible. 
You're the adult. Even the person's older than you. You're responsible. Taking the wheel in the relationship when it comes to the positivity is an incredibly difficult but an incredibly important role. Being responsible for the positivity in your relationship. Making sure that when you're in the room in this relationship, it's going to be positive. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be upbeat. It's going to be empowering. Just taking the wheel of empowerment and being responsible that whether you're, so to speak, nodding off tired or you're into it, it don't matter. You're driving the car. This, is, this exchange is going to be empowering. This relationship will be empowering. I am not going to go a period of time and allow this to fall off. That responsibility is what makes you great. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many gifts you buy. If you're responsible for the positivity of a relationship... You're bringing holiness into this world as far as I'm concerned. You're building people up. You're providing something that they may not get anywhere else. And it's awesome. Do not belittle it. It's not soft. It's not fluffy. It's not. Most of the stuff that the world thinks is fluffy and soft is actually much more difficult and much more important. It matters. People matter. And their feelings and emotions and spirituality matters. It makes people. That's why they're winning in life. That's why they're resilient in life. It's because somebody believed in them. Because somebody took responsibility for the positivity of that relationship at some point in their lives and that gives gives them the strength years later. That's the power we have on each other. That's the responsibility that we need to take in each other. That's how your life is filled with meaning all day long. You are overwhelmed with such incredible meaning because you are the responsible entity for empowerment. We can take. I'm, I, I'm with you on this. I'm learning it. If we can take responsibility for empowerment, man, the work, what we can do could change the world. All right, everybody, we'll continue. God's help. All right, have a great day. God's help. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Living on a lifeline, the world doesn't ever seem to change. Looking for the sunshine, but you're caught up in the rain. It's like you're right are wide open but you cannot see you're watching life pass you by like one two three walking in destruction the winds of life blur your vision all the devastation forever feels like you're on the run it's time no one else can set you free you're locked inside and only you have got the key